I'm a dog guy. You've met my dog. Pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. Well, it's funny that you said you're a dog guy because about the first three pages of the chapter are actually an apology for not including oh. dogs. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. I had a dog, you know. All right, very good, so very good. I start by talking about dogs quite a bit, actually. Yeah. But, well, that is a bit autobiographical. I talk a fair bit about my daughter in that, and she's actually vetted the chapter and, and helped me write it. Because um, I wrote about tragedy, really, about pain, and, and well, and the pain of, of caring for someone, especially with children, you know. And what you have to do when you're in a situation where tragic things are happening in front of you and you're somewhat powerless in, in the face of them, you know. And part of that is you have to keep your eyes open for, for the little opportunities, for the redemptive elements of being to sort of pop themselves up. So I, I talk a little bit about this cat that's across the street named Ginger. Ginger is this... Um, Siamese cats, really friendly, made friends with our dog, just by refusing to be afraid. It would come over and the dog would sort of bark and it would roll over and like paw at him, you know, so they were friends in no time. Mm -hmm. And the cat would just come over and like let you pet it and be happy with it for a minute. And that's when things are not good and hard, then you get these little moments where a little bit of possibility still shines through, and you got to take those moments when you get them. And so that's what that chapter is about. It's about how to manage when things are too much. And there's some practical advice in there. Like one of the things you have to do when things are just going to hell in a handbasket, let's say, is you got to also shrink your temporal horizon. It's like, you know, you think, well, I'm planning three months out. It's not, not if you're on fire. You're planning for the next two seconds, mm -hmm. you know. And, if things are really harsh in your life, someone's suffering around you and you got too many problems, it's like you shrink your time frame to the day and you try to, or the hour, or the minute. You say, okay, well, we gotta have the best next minute we can have, we gotta have, you, that's a deathbed thing too, right? It's like, you, sh you shrink the time until you can handle it. There's no, not any more going on in that tiny fragment of time than you can bear. That's how you adjust to the catastrophe and you try to stay on your feet and react during those periods of time. And so it's a bit of a discussion about how you reconfigure your perceptions of things when, when, when there's too much pain and trouble in your life. So it's, it's actually a very positive chapter, yeah. even though it deals with very, you know, harsh things. It was the most emotional chapter to write, I would say. And my daughter's actually doing quite well. She's figured out a lot of what was wrong with her. That's great. In an amazing tour de force of, of concentration and care, you know, that I can't believe she's managed it. Um, so it's a positive thing, the, the chapter. And, and, you know, it's a reminder to look for what's meaningful and soul satisfying, soul-sustaining, even when you're where you'd rather not be, so.